It's sliding! So hello people, this is Moskablak and today I'm presenting you the Cupra Formentor VZ5 and this car has something really really special, it's also in the name, it has the 5 cylinder engine of the Audi RS3, the 2.5 turbo engine pushing 390 horsepower and 480 newton meters in this so it can do 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.2 seconds which is insane for a car like this. It's also not so heavy but it's also not light, it's 1.68 tons like you can say 1.7 tons and it has a really really good looking front bronze cupra accents going throughout the whole of the car also the interior the brakes the rims just look at the brake and the rims they look so so cool actually and this white cupra here on the brake pad it looks so so good and the front has carbon we have a carbon front splitter on this cupra formator zr5 carbon fiber it's so so insane the grill looks really really good fitting to the cupra badge makes it look really really nice this is the car from the front it looks well it looks fairly decent it looks actually pretty good it doesn't look as shouty like let's say a glc 63 but this isn't also the class this car is starting from around 65,000 euros, so it's way cheaper and but it still looks really really good. We also have this livery here they made, the car dealer made it, the dealership made this livery, it looks really really nice. Cupra with the Cupra badge and this is the front of the Cupra. So I will now show you the engine under the bonnet of this Cupra Formentor. So this is the engine of the Cupra VZ5, the 2.5 liter five cylinder turbo from the Audi RS3 in an SUV like that. And you will see how it performs soon in my video and I will also take it to the Autobahn so we can see it. 390 horsepower, 480 newton meters and even the bronze accents on the engine cover. That's actually pretty, pretty cool. So let's now go to the side and then go to the back of the car and then jump inside, show you the inside and take it for a drive. Also on the front we have these beautiful looking headlights and they are matching the Cupra emblem kind of in a way. They have like this distinguishable form to them and they are really really nice. So let's now go to the side. The side has this amazing Cupra livery on here and you can see the bronze accents also on that brake. It looks so good and on these wheels and the Cupra emblems bronze but the back brake it isn't as big and special looking at the front one. It looks like an absolute normal brake from a normal car just look at this no holes in them no nothing just a black pad looks really really average the back brake but this is the side profile of the cupra formentor and it looks it looks really really good it's a compact suv it's a nice small suv really really good really much space for your family this car looks actually pretty pretty good we also have like the small little spoiler at the back making it a little bit more sporty these bronze accents like i mentioned 1000 times are actually the deal for me they they make this car special the five cylinder and it's actually a really special car for a budget and it looks so good like for an suv and stuff and for a cupra like it looks really really good so at the back of the Cupra VZ5 we have one of my favorite features about this car and it is the carbon diffuser. Just look at it, this car is a whole carbon diffuser with these bronze exhausts also mounted, really crazy Lexus looking or the M3 M performance exhaust. But look at this carbon diffuser on a Cupra Fomento. And also the bronze Cupra badge here. And we have the Audi dynamic lights here at the back. This is the key, the Volkswagen new key. And if I now press open, you will see dynamic lights in this Cupra Formentor VZ5. So let's now jump inside. I'll talk you through the inside and then we will take it for a drive. So this is the door panel of the Cupra Formentor. As you can see, we have leather, these bronze accents, also a stitching throughout the whole of the interior. Ambient lighting here and the Cupra doorstep in here. This is the Cupra doorstep. And we also have a floor mat saying Cupra Formentor V set 5. So let's jump inside. Before we jump inside, take a look at these beautiful Cupra seats here. These Cupra sport seats with the Cupra badge. Really, really nice looking. Also the bronze stitching on there. Let's jump inside. So inside of the Cupra Formento VZ5, we have the bronze accents everywhere. This is the steering wheel. 
looking really really nice we have all the buttons here to control them this is for your modes you press it you don't toggle it you press it and then you go into sport cupra snow whatever i will show you that in a second we have the paddle shifters of the old audi rs models some of you will recognize them just look at them and the bronze accents here bronze stitching here bronze also on the climate we have this little gear shifter here we know it now it's a modern a common thing so let's now talk you through the infotainment system how the steering wheel operates everything and then take it for a drive before we do that i will show you the back space of the four mentor and the boot space so sitting in the back it's actually i have pretty nice knee room in here we have two usb-c ports and this is your back view from the cupra four mentor it looks really really nice really modern perfect for the price let's now show you the boot space and then take it for a drive so let's open up the boot here automatic of course so this is the boot space not the biggest boot space but it's more than enough and it's normal for a car in this category so let's now talk you through the infotainment and take it for a drive so i have now straightened the wheel to talk you through the interior and show you how you operate it with the wheel so you press the start stop we have this dial here it's telling me that the maximum rpm i can do right now is five and a half thousand since the engine is a little bit cold with the view button here we can change how this looks look we now have different speedometers in here looking really really good this one is the worst looking in my opinion and we have this here and we have one with the map yes and we have the one i love this one because this one looks actually really sporty so the infotainment system takes a little bit of time to get used to so this is for your climate it's all touch you can maybe see up here i'm changing the temperature it's also making like a little toggling noise but it's all touch for the climate if i press on climate you will see where it's coming from you can put it like for the back to the front because at the back we have a different temperature. We can control both through here. We can press I climate, then we have this here for your hands, for your feet to warm them up. We can press this for the, for the heated seats. You press it here, three dots, now the seat is getting heated. It's all through the infotainment system. There is no physical buttons, it's all through touch here. It's all through the infotainment system and all through touch. Heated steering also here, but we have a button here on the steering wheel, this one. Now, as you can see, I'm changing the dots they are changing now it's off now it's on again so if i now want to go to car i press through here this is the main menu now i have my map my radio my mobile phone and the park assistant here and the climate and the tutorial to teach you about this infotainment system we have here like like apps and then you press on car here for example and then you can press everything the car like you can set your car settings obviously um, for example let's put it into cupra here even though we have that in the steering wheel and we have a drift mode we have a drift mode and maybe we can try it out here after the sound check i can do a drift mode so we have our ambiente um, our lighting our ambient lighting we can change modes in here so but that i will leave that for the night drive i will show you all of this in the night drive so make sure to subscribe to not miss it out let's go back into the main menu here for the apps we have also uh, for the climate but this is also we can watch our fuel level so everything is now touch and through this big infotainment system there is no physical buttons anywhere basically just for the window switches and stuff like that but the climate is in here by pressing these or swiping over these and this is also how you operate your music this is to make it louder you press here or you swipe here uh, it works both ways and this is how to make it quiet so let's now show you the sound of it try the drift mode and then take it for a drive and i'll also talk you through these buttons here on the steering wheel because they are for the screen in front of me car and see if this car actually drifts it has a drift mode so and now we are in the drift mode and let's see if this car actually drifts or if it's just claimed that it drifts so yeah it does drift actually 
it drifts. <laughs> That's really nice. So the Cupra 4 Mentor can drift. You need a lot of power to put it into the drift though. Uh, like you need to put a full throttle input, but it gets sliding. So starting off in the comfort mode, first thing you notice is the seating position. You are sitting like really low and also the steering wheel, this is the highest it can go. Look, there is no higher, but there is down. And this is like a really low and really unused seating position for me. Um, yeah, I don't know, like it's not low, like I've been in several supercars, it's not that type of low, but it's like you can't go any higher in here. The, the cockpit is like low, I hope you know what I mean. So driving it in the comfort, you can hear the fives and the rumbling away, sounding really, really nice, really, really good. It's pretty comfortable in the comfort mode. Nothing to complain about, honestly. Comfort is comfort. So let's now take a left turn. Brakes are pretty good. So let's put it into the sport by pressing the Cupra button. Then you see it goes to sport. Oh, this sounds so nice. I just love this sound. Oh, this is actually pretty loud in here. And this isn't even the Cupra mode. And it's pretty high revving in the sport already. So that's actually nice. And we will also measure the 0 to 100 with a launch control soon. Steering feel is actually giving me the sense that this car is pretty small and pretty agile and pretty light to drive. So this is a nice thing. This car feels really nimble, really agile. Let's put it into the Cupra and see if it makes any difference. Yeah, it actually does. It's actually now even more agile and it's more direct in the Cupra mode. That's actually pretty nice. So you have different settings for your you have different settings for your transmissions. The first one is S in the Cupra mode. The first one is S and you have S plus. And in the S plus it revs even higher out. Whoa, oh, the power is good. Whoa, oh, the sound. It sounds pretty good. Look at how it's behaving. It's got power. This car's got power. It feels so it feels so nice to drive, it's such a fun car. Let's see how it is in the S Plus if I give it a kick down. Oh, this guy just ruined us. So, 3, 2, 1, instant. The kick down was instant. In the gauge cluster, the kick down was insta instant, but it took a second to give me the power. And this 5 cylinder sound is so good, so nice. In a car like this, we are used to GTI and Golf R engines. Now we have the Audi R3. Now we have the five cylinder of the Audi R3. No pops and bangs. Yeah, absolutely nothing. And the sound doesn't feel pumped inside. It feels really natural. It feels really raspy in front also. Yeah, it doesn't feel pumped inside, honestly. No pops, no bangs, no nothing, but a lot of power. Let's give it full throttle here. I'm wondering what happens if I would like a rev to the limiter. Does it have a limiter? Let's see if it has a limiter. Yes, it has. And it has like a no, 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 no. That's nice. That's a nice feature. And it doesn't shift up itself. That's a nice feature. Gives you a sporty feeling as well in a car like this. Low pickup is pretty good. Sound is, I love the sound. So let's now turn around here and then do a launch control on the way back. So these are our view buttons. We changed the dials through here. This is for our lane keeping assist and stuff. And also we have a really nice backup camera view. I will show you that now. If we go to, wait, I first want my, yeah. If we now go to reverse, we can see we have a 360 degrees camera. 
not the best of quality actually but it does the job even a camera in front well this is actually not so nice look at the pixels but a camera in front and a camera in the back it's i can't complain you can park perfectly with this all the lines of your of your wheels and stuff you can park perfectly with this no need to complain about it so let's now go back and see how this thing performs I just love the sound. It feels pretty agile, pretty decent. I'm wondering how it will feel on the Autobahn at higher speeds and stuff like that. Will it feel planted or will it be like jumpy and bumpy and stuff like this? Let's see how it will perform on the Autobahn. If you are enjoying this review so far, I would really be happy if you could give it a like. Yeah, there's no pops and banks. I'm now in the Cupra mode. Manual plus, sport plus for the transmission. Nothing happens. No pops and banks in this car, sadly. But a really nice five cylinder engine sound. And it doesn't auto kick down. If you're in the manual mode, it stays in manual. Look, kick down. This is a kick down. I get to enjoy the whole of the sound. Let's put it into the comfort. And it transforms. It's now completely comfortable, this car. Look. Silent. Nice to ride with. Pretty good daily. This car is a pretty, pretty good daily. So people, I'm now at my launch control spot. The Draggy app is set up. Let's put it into the Cupra mode and let's now launch it. Oh my God, this car is so fast. We did 4.02 seconds. We did four seconds flat. We did four seconds flat in the Cupra Foreman Tour. This is insane. And it also felt really, really fast. Four seconds, four seconds in a car like this. I have to try it out again. So let's try that out again. Oh my God, it's sliding. So fast. What did we do? We did 4.4 seconds because it was slipping. Let's now launch this car again. It's sliding. We did a 508, 0 to 100, but just because this car was sliding. In the S, in the S plus for the transmission, it revs so high, it revs out the whole gear actually. It's a really nice sporty car. Let's put on the traction again. Yeah, it was sliding around, but maybe, maybe we can try a launch control with the traction on. Picks up so well. We did a 4.02 0 to 100, which is insane in a car like this. But let's see how we can do with the traction on. It's plus. No launch control engaging. It needs the stability off. It's not working. So that was without launch control, a 0 to 100 of 4.6 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoy this coupe performing tour as much as I did. The RS3 engine is doing such a nice job to this car. It's such a blessing for a car like this, that five cylinder engine, making it really, really special. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the review and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.